Hey everyone, Dan here. We are during the trading day on Tuesday, July 20th. Today we're going to take a look at SoFi lockup period and warrants. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. And also keep in mind that SEC filings and documents are very confusing. So these are my thoughts, opinions, my take on the documents. Please read them yourself come to your own conclusions, and make your own decisions based on your interpretation of what's being said. Okay, so I wanted to do this video because I've seen a, a reemergence <laughs> of talk about the lockup expiration is coming and sort of the fear and uncertainty that that's driving into SoFi and into sort of the retail um, traders space and sort of, you know, them kind of concerned that there's another big sell-off coming because there's going to be all of these shares unlocked that'll then be tradable and and sold into the open market and that sort of thing. So let's flip over because this is not a chart video. I'll do my daily SoFi video tonight as usual. Um, this document we will come back to in a minute. This is the document that I put together when I first started making SoFi lockup videos, uh, which you can go back and look at if you want, but should probably just watch this one. Um, talking about basically taking the SEC filings and highlighting and bolding a few things and focusing on what they say and trying to interpret them. Let's first go to a couple of news items that can help point us in the right direction to whether or not the lockup period has already ended and if so, when and, and for whom and so on and so forth. So here's a story from June 25th. Um, so SoFi has shown effectiveness for conclusion of lockup period. Lockup set to expire on Monday, June 28th for 5 plus percent uh, shareholders, certain execs. This lockup does not apply to pipe investors. All right, that's from Benzinga. On Yahoo Finance, uh, oh, not that one. Let's go to this one my life of a thousand tabs. Uh, considering the case for lockup expiration of SoFi technology shares today, Monday, June 28th. All right, and then Rosenblatt is talking about, I think, why they made their, uh, you know, their recommendation and, uh, yeah, their $30 price target, so on and so forth. But this uh, article came out on June 28th, talking about lockup expiration on June 28th. Now, let's talk about why this would be. All right, so this is from this filing, okay? And this is just me copy-pasting things into a doc so that I can then kind of highlight things. So uh, the closing date, which we would say is May 28th, that's the close of business for IPOE, because then June 1st started the open of business for SoFi. The earlier of the date that's 180 days after the closing date for 33% of the lockup shares. All right, if the share price equals or exceeds 1250 per share for any 20 trading days within a 30 trading day period, commencing at least 30 days after the closing date, 50% of the lockup shares, totaling an aggregate 83% of the lockup shares. Um, if the stock equals or exceeds $15 per share for any 20 trading days within any 30 trading day period commencing at least 30 days after the closing date. Now, let me talk about the two ways that we initially read this when I first went over this doc. First was that uh, as long as SoFi is exceeding $15 within, 20, within the first 20 trading days of its life, uh, in, in air quotes, um, then that will unlock this 83% because um, it's satisfied this 20 within 30 trading day period. Now, then there was a bunch of questions about, but what does this mean? Commencing at least 30 days after the closing date. And first there was speculation around, well, does that mean that the count of 20 trading days within a 30 trading day period doesn't begin until after 30 days after the closing date, which is the math that you see down here, right? If the closing date is May 28th, 
30 days after is Sunday, June 27th, uh, which then Monday the 28th will be the first trading day after that. But these are 30 calendar days. 20 trading days after June 27th would be July 26th. All right, so that's coming up. Today's July 20th. 30 trading days after would be August 9th. Okay, so if the count were to start on uh, Monday, June 28th, then yes, the 20th trading day uh, for SoFi to be above $15 would be on July 26th. Now, what I believe, how I believe this is actually meant to be read is that yes, it has to fulfill this 20 trading days within a 30 trading day period, but that that can't be sooner than 30 days after the closing date. And yes, like I said, I, I'm going to do an entire other video and series on, on how confusingly written these documents are and how when they know the date of the close of business <laughs> and the start of the new business, when they know those dates, it's kind of irresponsible to put everything out in this language that is just dramatically confusing and not just know what the dates are and put the dates like I did down here, right? But anyway, what I think that this is saying and why Benzinga and Yahoo would then say that the lockup had ended on the 28th of June would coincide with this idea that as long as SoFi is trading above these certain price thresholds for 20 trading days within a 30 trading day period, so if it's 20 straight trading days, then you're covered, right? But that can't happen sooner than 30 calendar days after the closing date, which would then stick us on June 27th, which is not a trading day. So the first trading day following that would be June 28th. Hence, it would line up with the Benzinga and Yahoo timelines. Um, so that's what I'm looking at, that that lockup, that these um, sort of criteria had been reached and that that lockup had happened then. This would obviously coincide well with, if we look what happened uh, when we go back there, on the 28th, here we go. So on the 28th, you know, if the lockup expired, we had a nice run that day after following a big sell-off leading into uh, the weekend. But then we see this, you know, so this is like a blip on the on the radar, right? Because obviously there's all of this selling off in advance, this blip on the radar, the day that expiration uh, apparently happens, you know, for the locked up shares. But then we just see this continuous selling off and dramatic increase in volume. If you look at, let me pull up the volume. Look at the <laughs> the change in the volume starting on the 25th. So hypothetically, people trying to get out in front of, um, you know, the sell-off that they worry is going to happen after the lockup comes. Okay. And so then they're getting, getting out of their positions and letting the dust settle uh, for the lockup shares, you know, being dumped onto the market. Um, then obviously there was a rally on the 28th, you know, why that is speculate, speculate, don't know. But then we see this continuous selling off week over week over week, uh, with a huge bump in volume. I mean, the volume on these days previously, you know, was in like the single digits of the millions, right? Um, and so something around like four or five million, I think, if I'm, if I'm recalling correctly on those days. And then we see this uh, dramatic jump up in volume into uh, the, the dozens of millions of volume. We can just go to the daily and track it there. But you'll see here on the 28th, yeah, so here on the 28th, 56.3 million, 55 million the following day, and then 27, 19, 25. So this would pretty well line up with a bunch of shares becoming available to be sold into the market on these days. And it then, you know, prior to this day, look at the volume, 3.5, 6.5, 5.3, 7.2, 9. So, you know, compare a, a high of 9 in what we just looked at to uh, 55 million to 56 million to 27 million, 25 million. So 
This would make sense to me based on the huge kick up in the volume that we saw. Um, so that's what I'm looking for from that. So if folks have differing information of why they think that the lockup is expiring uh, this, you know, at the end of this month, other than just the different interpretation that I already pointed out here, please let me know. But if there, if this interpretation that leads us to July 26 is correct, um, I don't know how to account for that huge spike in volume that we saw around June 28th, which would account for the other interpretation, as well as the news stories coming out saying June 28th. Now, I know there can be unreliable factors that go into why certain news items come out when, but uh, these seem to just align to, to me pretty well with the facts of the documents, how I originally read it, as well as the volume. To me, the volume is is a big tell. Um, you know, you need that many shares coming onto the market to drive that huge, huge shift in volume. So to me, that's a big factor. Now, scrolling down here, you know, this Benzinga thing here talked about five plus percent shareholders, certain execs, and the pipe investors. Now, let's see. I think that this is a little potentially misleading, and I'll tell you why, at least by how I read the documents, the very confusing documents that you should read for yourself and make your own decisions. So if I stockholders who beneficially own 5% or greater uh, and certain executive officers will be contractually restricted from selling or transferring any of its or their shares of common stock, not including the shares of SoFi common stock issued in the pipe investment pursuant to the terms of the subscription agreements. Now let's go down here. Following the expiration of the respective lockups described above, the sponsor, yada, 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 third party pipe investors will not be restricted from selling any of the shares of SoFi acquired in the pipe investment following the closing of the business combination. So again, the closing of the business combination would have been that May 28th to June 1st lead-in. And this, to me, is saying that the pipe investors will not be restricted from selling any, will not be restricted from selling any of the shares acquired in the pipe investment following the closing of the business combination. So that to me just says they were always able to sell them. And so this, you know, Benzinga headline saying that this does not apply to them is because not, not because they have to wait longer, but because they were always able to sell. Um, again, if you have a different interpretation of this, obviously use that interpretation to make your own decisions, but also feel free to share that in the comments below um, so folks can see sort of like, the wide range of of ideas and interpretations of looking at the same documents and reading the same language. It's insane. Um, so going down here, we can skip that one because that's irrelevant for this video. Now let's get into the warrants situation. Um, oh, I had one more news article here from Investing Cube. I don't know what that is, but um, early investors in the SPAC deal were permitted to sell their shares from the 28th of June. Okay, so there's that. Um, now, oh, one other thing that I think is actually like really uh, potentially important. MarketBeat has a lockup expiration, like an upcoming lockup expirations uh, page that they publish. And if I search for SoFi on here, I don't see it anywhere. I got nothing, okay? And this obviously is in July. And if we scroll down here, this goes to September, I think, by the time we get to the end here. So this is covering all the way to September 28th, and MarketBeat is not saying that there is, uh, or, you know, I'm not finding a ticker symbol SOFI uh, on their IPO lockup expirations. Whether or not there's some reason that that would not show up here, I don't know. Um, let's see if something like 23 and me. Oh, it's going to be an annoying thing to look for. Uh, do they do it like this? No. Um, but okay. Well, we won't worry about that. But anyway, it doesn't show SoFi on this um, IPO lockup expirations. 
So take that for what you will. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff that's being talked about with warrants. Let's go through this quickly. So um, in this filing, that's, uh, you know, this is the title of it, proxy statement for yada, yada, yada. Um, they're talking about the prospectus for 765 million shares of common stock and a little over 20 million redeemable warrants. Now let's look at the warrants situation that I copied out of that document, or actually out of this document, this form 424B3. All right, so redeemable warrants, um, uh, 1150 per share is subject to adjustment as discussed below at any time commencing on the later of 30 days after May 28th, 2021, which we're well aware of what 30 days after is now, and 12 months from October 14th, 2020. Okay, so this is any time commencing on the later of. So obviously the later of will be 12 months from October 14th. 2020. The public warrants will expire five years after the completion of the business combination at 5 p.m. NYC time. Okay. Um, redemption of warrants when the price per SoFi Technologies comes back equals or exceeds $10. So you see these different thresholds as we go down, spreading from $10 that you see here to $18. There's a table at the bottom that I have that shows you. Um, but in the event that the conditions of the two immediately preceding sentences are not satisfied with respect to a public warrant, the holder of a warrant will not be entitled to exercise such warrant and it will expire worthless. All right. So if it equals or exceeds, you know, the common stock equals or exceeds $18, uh, that's the sort of threshold that they're talking about here. Upon not less than 30 days prior written notice of redemption of each warrant holder and blah, 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 same idea here, 20 trading days within a 30 trading day period ending on the third trading day prior to the date on which we send the notice. Okay, so this is basically saying here's how we, or here's the time frame in which we'll send notice for exercising these warrants uh, or redeeming the warrants. Uh, and so then here again, they're referencing the $10. You'll see at the table at the bottom there is a slew of different uh, price points and thresholds. Here's the table. All right. So you see this goes up to 60 months. That's the five years it's referenced. But basically, um, you know, these are the different prices, fair market value of SoFi stock, and then the redemption dates prior uh, period to expiration of the warrants. So that's the five years that were referenced and the various three-month increments in between. All right, so there's your table. Warrants 10 to $18. And as we were talking about, or as they were talking about them up here, uh, you know, they're talking about these redemption periods. Um, and then they're talking about this 1150 per share, which I believe if we come over here and we go, so if I... W, so if I want, uh, these are the 1150, I don't know if it says here in the profile, uh, no, but I believe that these are the 1150 warrants that they're describing. I don't know if this says this in here anywhere, no, but um, yeah, we can do, if somebody knows on this, you know, feel free to let me know, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> that these, that the SoFi W uh, ticker are the 1150 warrants that folks are scooping up or purchasing. And, um, you know, that they're talking about uh, subject to the adjustment as discussed below, anytime commencing. Okay. So you have all these conditions to be met. Um, in the event that the conditions in the two immediately preceding sentences are not satisfied, then they expire worthless. That's always the risk with these warrants. Um, and so obviously they're needing to reach, again, certain thresholds, 20 trading days within 30 day period, um, in order for these to be redeemed. And then you, know, you see here, there's a bunch of references to the different price points that exist with the warrants. But, you know, dig through this document too, if you want um, to get more info. Uh, this, you know, if you just Google this, you can certainly find it and sort of like 
decipher it and make your own decisions based on that. But I think this is a long enough video for this info. Again, this is just me saying my interpretation is that the lockup expired June 28th. Um, the volume seems to indicate that. The documents and the news items seem to line up in order to indicate that. And that is the info that I'm going off of for the time being. Now, if you have other info, or if there's some other reason that folks are citing a lockup period other than the one that we were describing with the aggregate of 83%, um, please let me know. I honestly think a lot of folks are being triggered because there is that $15 price threshold and folks are sort of seeing uh, SoFi kick around very close to $15, right? And then they're sort of saying, oh, this is why SoFi is being propped up over $15 currently because they are wanting to reach that 83% aggregate uh, you know, for for those shares to be unlocked, on um, you know, at the end of July. But uh, again, I, I think that that's already occurred, uh, and I think that that's sort of like in in the recent past. But share your info in the comments below with uh, you know your own interpretation, and of course, make your decisions based on your own interpretation and uh, how you read the documents. But the sad fact is these things have to be so widely debated because they are presented in such a confusing manner. And even the fact that, you know, this sentence being what it is and it being so possible to easily interpret that two different ways, that the count begins 30 days after the closing date or that the earliest at which the lockup can expire is 30 days after the closing date, you know, it's unfortunate that that's how things are represented to the public. All right. Well, I hope that you have a good trading day and I appreciate you watching and I wish you the best. I will see you in the next video.